Hi, my name is Jamie Fitzgerald, Product Line Manager for Management Solutions here at Palo Alto Networks. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about some really cool features that we just added to PanOS 8.0. These three features are filter log forwarding, HTTP log forwarding, and auto tag. So let's talk about what's happening in real life networks today and how our solutions can really help you. Let's say we have a set of logs that are coming in and we'll distinguish those logs by these separate colors. Um, as an example, let's say that these are URL filtering logs that are today part of what we call our, log, our, our threat log database. So the way that log forwarding works today is you have to pick a severity of log to forward to, let's say, a SIM, syslog, email, or uh, let's say, SNMP trap. The beauty of this solution is that what we're able to do is to build a filter and this filter allows me to select particular logs of interest to be able to take particular actions on. So in this example, I'll say the log is a URL that is of category malware. Now, you might be forwarding all of your logs to a SIM, but if you had a particular set of logs that are, let's say, of this category malware, I might want to take a different action. So now what I'm able to do is put any filter, the same types of filters that I could put on the monitor tab on the, the, either the panorama solution or on the firewall itself, and now do something special with it. So as an example, I might say, if I get a malware URL log, instead of just forwarding it to my SIM, I might want to forward it to, syslog it to, let's say, to my SOC team. Maybe they don't need to see all URLs, maybe they don't need to see the web advertisements or sports logs, but malware is something that might be really interesting. Very powerful feature just from that perspective, but yet there's more. From here, what I'm able to do is start taking advantage of this other feature that we're calling HTTP, HTTP log forwarding. Now let's see what we can do with this. So let's say that as an example, I'll give you a different example, same concept. I create a filter, and in this example, I'm looking at system logs. This will work with pretty much all the different logs that we have in our system beyond just threat logs, traffic logs, um, system logs as well. So let's say that if I ever see a system log that is of an HA failover, that, for example, this leads to a particular set of actions in my organization. If I ever saw one of these logs that was a, uh, a system an HA failover, I might have a particular workflow that happens naturally in my organization today. For example, I might need to go discover, was there an upstream router that went down? Did the firewall have a problem? I might just need to do a natural investigation. So what HTTP log forwarding does for me is it allows me to naturally fit into your current solution by doing, let's say, an HTTP post to let's say your IT ticketing system. So let's say as an example, and one of the things that we're gonna ship with is one of our partners, ServiceNow. Now, just to make sure that we're clear on what we're saying here, is that if there is ever an HA failover, based on this filtering, lo filtering logic, I want to do an HTTP post to my IT ticketing system, ServiceNow, so that without having to have an admin sit behind a screen and filter logs that are coming in, I automatically can take an action and forward this log out to a third-party IT ticketing system to work within your natural uh, workflows that take place in your organization today. Really powerful feature. And yet, there's more. Now I'm gonna be talking about how the third feature that I'm going to be talking about today fits into this store and adds even more power. So let's look at another example where we're going to utilize the filtered log forwarding. And in this case, we're going to be talking about another log type, in this case, correlation. If we have a correlation event that, let's say, looks like a particular host was hit by an exploit kit, I might want to take even more severe action in this particular case. So if an event took place, where I see that a, a particular user hits an exploit kit, a correlation object, 
let's say this particular host had uh, IP address source 10.1.1.1. The auto tag feature allows the system to automatically put some context around this particular source IP. So if we saw a host that, let's say, triggered this exploit kit act log, then now what I can do is, let's say, tag this particular IP with a tag called 2-factor auth, 2FA. Now, what we can do with this is allow the rest of the system to start taking advantage of this metadata, this, inf this information or this tag in the rest of our system. How would that work? What you can do is create pre-create pre something called a dynamic address group called 2FA. And let's say this dynamic address group is looking for anything with the tag 2FA. Now, by default, there are no members to this particular group. But if this event takes place and you utilize this, two, this new auto-tagging feature, the tag 2FA will be applied to this particular source IP. So now, automatically, without user interaction, 10.1.1.1 is applied, is now a part of this particular membership group. Now from here, if you pre-created a security rule or an auth rule in this particular case, that was looking for the source of this dynamic address group, 2FA, the destination being, let's say, my data center, and my action would be to force a two-factor auth. This would be an amazing opportunity for uh, a, this, all of these features to come together to really enforce and take um, this action to the next level. So let's recap what happens. A particular user triggers what we call a correlation event that looks like they've, tr they've been uh, struck by an exploit kit. We utilize this auto tag feature to now tag this particular source IP with 2FA. What happens from here is that flows and starts and automatically puts that IP address in this dynamic address group called DAG2FA, which is used in an auth rule that says, if anybody's trying to reach my data center and matches this particular source group, I want to factor, uh, force them to do a two-factor authentication to make sure that they didn't, for example, have their credentials stolen, and now maybe this particular user is trying to get around the network and steal information really powerful way of utilizing these three features that have been introduced in PanOS 8.0. This and a whole lot of amazing features were added in this most recent, largest feature release we've ever done at Palo Alto Networks. So if you'd like to learn more, please check out our admin guide or any other videos here on our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.